This is Timmy. He is my 1999 Mini John Cooper LE, and I've set myself the goal of restoring him back to his former glory, along with attempting to make some quality of life improvements. I've owned Timmy for just a few years, and want to keep him road ready for many more, the main issue being his unwillingness to cooperate. I've covered some of what needs to be done to Timmy in the previous video, but most of what lurks underneath still remains a mystery, and I'll be uncovering and documenting all of this as I go. There's certainly a lot to do, but before all that, here's a little history. The John Cooper Ellie was a limited run, created to pay tribute to Mini's 40th year, along with the 40th anniversary of the Cooper F1 World Championship. Officially, 300 were produced. However, John Cooper's wife wanted a new Cooper Ellie after they all sold out. In response, Rover built an additional Y-plate car for her, pushing the production total up to 301. This one's in Brooklyn's green with a grenadine red leather interior. I've kindly been offered this garage space by my dad, so here's where I'll be carrying out most of the work. I've not done much more than an oil change before, so stripping down and rebuilding a car is completely new to me. And to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure where to start. So I think the first thing I need to do is remove the battery. And in order to do that, I need to remove the boot lining. But I have just bought a central locking kit. Here's the kit in question. As you can see, it comes with four actuators. Two of them won't be needed, but the other two are master actuators, allowing the central locking to be activated by the key from both doors. Not sure what I'll do with the other two. Any ideas, pop them in the comments. Other than that, I was drawn to its rave reviews. I also ordered this alarm interface to link the central locking kit to the Rover factory fitted immobiliser, but more on this later. First things first, I need to get inside the door. This is as simple as unscrewing the door hardware and pulling the plastic poppers out. Better get to work. Next comes the waterproof sheet. I can see that these doors have been worked on previously, as there's some screws missing around the window mechanism. The membrane comes away easily, and as you can see, I took care to roll it up, safe and sound. Minitrailers.com no longer exists, but you can still access it using the Wayback Machine. There's a bunch of information on there about how to fit the locking kit that they used to sell, and I'll be using this information to help me make and fit my mechanism. First things first, I bent up and fitted one of the universal brackets that comes with the kit. I know I need a pivot point here in this open space somewhere, so this is where I'll start and build out from here. The main arm pivots off of this bracket and will take the movement from the solenoid up to the door lock. It needs to fit around the shape of the door and the manual locking system, so some bending was in order. I picked up some of this aluminium strip from home base. I'm not entirely sure it's the right stuff for the job, but it should serve as a proof of concept until I have the measurements down and then be a useful template for the final system.
Here's what one of the finished kits looks like. And here it is in position as it would be inside the door. The connecting rod is from the kit and it connects the solenoid to the aluminium bar that I bent up. Once the bar is attached to the door bracket that I fitted, and the top of the strip is attached to the Mini's locking mechanism, the only thing left to secure in place is the solenoid right at the base of the door, out of the way of the window when it's down. The reason I'm fitting these kits now is so that I'm not drilling into fresh paint after the respray. Better to make a mistake at this stage, I think. Now that's in place, I can put it all to the test. You can see in the reflection of the car that I'm using the other master solenoid to activate the fitted one. It's effectively simulating the passenger's door being locked and unlocked. Here's what it looks like in action. I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with that. Just got the passenger side to do now. I'll speed it up for you. With the central locking now fitted, I need to find a way to get the remote part of it working. These locking kits have the ability to be connected to an existing factory fitted alarm. In my case, all you need is an interface lead that connects the car's alarm to the aftermarket locking kit. Actually fitting the lead should be very simple, it's just two wires. However, getting to the alarm requires the dashboard to come out, so that's what I'll be doing next. It's just three bolts, one behind the stereo, and one on each side under the dash. The driver's side is a tight squeeze. I thought it'd be worth taking off the steering column cowling to give myself some more room, but it wasn't necessary in the end. As you can see, natural finesse. At this point, while easing the dashboard out, a yellow raw plug should fall on the floor. Look after that. The reason for the hold up was a few things still being plugged in at the back. The speedo cable on my car is very short and it must be undone by reaching through the stereo space. Angling the dash forward, I can see the final connection holding me up. It's this round one on the back of the rev counter. With that off, the dash comes out, ready to be stored safely, while the rest of the work goes on.
And finally, we have access to the alarm system. You can see on the left the grey plug. According to the instructions, this is the one that I need to patch into. It's just the two screws holding the alarm in. The loom fits here on the grey plug and the other end connects to the aftermarket locking kit. After pushing them into place, connecting up the earths and reconnecting the battery, we're ready to test. And just like that, we have a working remote central locking system with the factory fob now activating the aftermarket kit. Here you can see the solenoid from the driver's door also being activated. And I think that is a bit of a result. So on that note, it's probably a good time to end it. I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride. Please subscribe if you want to see more, or throw a like my way, or even check out the Patreon. There's so much more to do. See you there.